Dr. Hal Rice here from the Gold Coast in Australia. I'm a radiologist who specialises in uh, diagnosing and treating sports injuries using high-level imaging modalities such as MRI and ultrasound and CT and then treating those injuries with image-guided interventions. Um, I'm here with Brad on the Physical Performance Show, going to be talking about imaging and how it uh, relates to sports injuries, both the diagnosis and prognosis for these patients, getting them back playing their sport that they love. I've had my ups and my downs. I think it's an absolutely breakthrough experience. Welcome to the Physical Performance Show, the show designed to inspire the pursuit of your physical best performance. I'm your host, Brad Beer. Listen in as we delve into how the world's top physical performers achieve their success, as well as the highs, the lows, and the journey of getting there. Let's get ready, set, let's go. Welcome to another episode of the Physical Performance Show, brought to you by Gold Coast Marathon and Pogo Physio. I trust you've been having a great week, and I hope that you've been enjoying pursuing your physical best performance. On today's episode, I bring you an expert edition of the Physical Performance Show. The expert editions are where I catch up with some of the world's leading health and physical performance experts and minds. You will not be disappointed with today's guest, Dr. Hal Rice. I've known Hal personally on the Gold Coast for over 10 years now, and I've had the distinct pleasure of working alongside Hal and also his team at the QScan Radiology Clinics in the management of many of the patients who I have seen at Pogo Physio. Hal's credentials are incredible, as is Hal's bio. Dr. Rice obtained his medical degree at the University of Queensland in 1992, followed by his residency at the Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital. Hal then went on to complete his specialist training in diagnostic and interventional radiology at the Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital before undertaking advanced specialist fellowship in diagnostic and interventional neuroradiology at the world-famous Mount Sinai Medical Center in New York. On returning to the Gold Coast, Hal then co-founded QScan Radiology Clinics, which today boasts more than 30 locations across Australia, treating more than 430,000 patients annually. On returning to the Gold Coast from New York, Hal also established the Interventional Neuroradiology Service at the Gold Coast Hospital. And this service is now regarded as one of the premier sites in Australia for the endovascular treatment of life-threatening brain aneurysms and acute ischemic stroke. Hal has worked as a diagnostic and interventional neuroradiologist at the Gold Coast Hospital since 2003. Hal has a major academic interest in, obviously, diagnostic and interventional neuroradiology. But it's also Hal's special interest in sports medicine imaging and musculoskeletal imaging and non-invasive pain management and all fields of advanced magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, that had me wanting to connect with Hal to unpack the world of diagnostic imaging and interventions for athletes, for people looking to pursue and perform at their physical best. And that's exactly what we speak through on today's episode. So during this conversation... We talk about the importance of getting and establishing an accurate diagnosis for your sporting injury, what that means for prognosis or the outcome of your injury. We talk through common conditions and common imaging types such as ultrasound, plain film x-rays, magnetic resonance imaging or MRI, and also Hal touches on some of the new muscle fiber typing technologies that uh, bring in some interesting findings to recreational and elite athletes. QScan is the provider to Swimming Australia, Triathlon Australia, and Cricket Australia here in southeast Queensland. Hal himself is also a very keen runner. In fact, as a junior, Hal ran an incredible 238 when he fell in love with the Gold Coast Marathon, a race that he won the junior category in three years in a row. So Hal lives and breathes musculoskeletal health and all things medicine. Let's hear from Dr. Hal Rice, QScan Radiology.
We've been trying to set this one up for a little while. Uh, I'm sitting here with Hal Rice. Hal is in the medical field, someone that uh, whose name comes up always glowingly, particularly here in the community that I sit in on the Gold Coast, as someone that uh, is excellent in what he does. Uh, and I refer to him as potentially the busiest guy on the Gold Coast. Um, not just that, but also a very, uh, very helpful, informative guy in his, in his field. So Dr. Hal Rice, absolute pleasure to finally catch up with him. Yeah, look, thanks, Brad. Pleasure to be here. And uh, Hal, to give listeners some context to, you know, apart from the introduction, the bio that I've already shared, you've super well credentialed in your, your space, your field. But before we share a little bit about your specialties, what got you into medicine? What's your career journey been like to date? Yeah, look, it's a long journey, Brad. Like most people who specialise in something and yourself is no different. You know, to be an expert in something, you've got to invest many years of uh, training. So I initially trained in my medical degree at uh, University of Queensland and then uh, did all my training up in Brisbane at Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital and then did some advanced training over in New York uh, in 2001, 2002 uh, before I came back here on the Gold Coast. So look, I do a variety of different things. My, my specialty is radiology, uh, which is involving uh, the diagnosis and and, um, and also interventional procedures, treating patients with minimally invasive techniques uh, with imaging guidance. So uh, the key things we get to play with every day in our, in our work sphere is uh, particularly MRI, uh, which is a really uh, valuable modality in analysing and monitoring athletes and, and people who have sporting injuries uh, in particular, but also brain aneurysms, brain tumours, all those sort of things uh, are a major part of what I do from day to day in my work. And that interventional and diagnostic, you know, radiology, from my understanding, there's yourself and one of your colleagues at QScan, uh, Letitia de Villas, yeah. you, you're it for the Gold Coast, I believe. Yeah, we are, and that's it's very busy. So apart from having a busy day job uh, at QScan, uh, we do a lot of 24-7 <laughs> on-call uh, patients with brain aneurysms. Uh, we're able to treat them just going in through the, through the patient's leg, through their femoral artery and navigating up onto the inside of their brain and, and repairing a burst blood vessel and aneurysm in their brain and then in more recent times we're now treating patients with strokes so uh, as opposed to a burst blood vessel this is now a blocked blood vessel and we're unblocking it and so these patients who come in with a potentially life-threatening or severely dis uh, disabling stroke we're able to uh, to fix that the problem with that is it's a 24 7 on-call service uh, we drain a population of over a million people here and with two of us on call it means you're on one week on one week off and if the other colleagues away on leave you're on you know for, for a month at a time so it is pretty demanding yeah and certainly not uh, I mean we sat on one of the former guests of this podcast uh, Kane Eckstein when he said his 24 hour pull up board record and you were sitting there you're one of the, the sponsors and supporters of uh, the Eckstein brothers uh, QScan that is and uh, you were sitting there reporting on you know on uh, radiology reports uh, reading them and uh, while you were also keeping an eye on Kane so uh, that was well into the early part of the morning morning <laughs> yeah and, and look that happens on a regular basis i'm not unique you know, my other colleagues do that as well and um, i guess we've got that marriage of technology now and, and great sort of high speed broadband wherever you are in the world uh, and now with these images that you're getting on mri or ct scans 24 7 we can see them anywhere in the world even on our iphone and, and do a report so what it does is it, it links the patient who's having the imaging study uh, with a specialist who's an expert in that area who can then do the report and uh you know, benefit the patient ultimately. So previously, you know, it was on cut film and you'd wait a few days for a report, whereas now it's instantaneous. So, you know, I've, I've been able to do call while I've been skiing in Japan uh, with uh, cases back in Australia, and, and it's not infrequent that, you know, uh, you're on holidays and there's a particular athlete with an injury and, and you look at their MRI scans on your phone uh, wherever you are in the world. So, And I think certainly from the consumer point of view, the trend to digital in the radiology space has been well received and you know as a physiotherapist patients don't walk in clients don't walk in anymore with uh with so much with their the big cardboard folder they'll come in and we'll access it online and uh and i think everyone's happy so absolutely and look you know with the imaging uh technology there's many many images per study now so you could either have a huge packet of film and, and get a back injury carrying that into a physiotherapist <laughs> or your surgeon or now it's all online so patients love it you know at QScan we have an app where the patients can you know when they leave the practice have a look at their ultrasound or MRI they can actually see the images on that app and uh, it's basically basically a virtual um, imaging folder which contains all their studies all their reports um, 
are. So if they're going from practitioner to practitioner, they're able to then take those studies with them. So yeah. patients really enjoy it. I know, I know uh, all the physios and, and different surgeons also enjoy just having that filmless environment. Yeah. You know, it's got the advantage of uh, speed and um, yeah, much much uh, you know, usability. Yeah, absolutely. How uh, your I recall having a conversation with you, I think at a football match, your journey into your specialty as a radiologist, from recollection, it wasn't always going to be radiology. You had, uh, I think, a, another specialty in mind, and then you realised that this is probably where you wanted to spend your career. What was the, the backstory there? Yeah, look, I guess as a kid growing up, I, I loved sport. I loved cricket. I loved football. I loved running. They were the sort of big sports that I loved. So uh, when I went into medicine, it was always, you know, a sporting element, you know, was, was where I wanted to be. So when I was a junior doctor working in the hospitals, orthopaedics was, was really the area that I wanted to go into. And uh, I really never considered radiology until the point that you suddenly, you know, were in theatre and and uh, we're trying to find a meniscal tear on arthroscopy. And uh, I always believed that the arthroscopy was the gold standard at that point where, you know, if you can't see it on arthroscopy, that means there isn't a meniscal tear. And anyway, we went back to the MRI scan that was uh, performed a couple of weeks prior to that and, and sure, you could see the meniscal tear on the MRI and then you'd search harder and, you know, deeper in the back recess on the uh, arthroscopy and sure enough, there was the tear. So I suddenly realised there was something more powerful than, you know, than a surgical option uh, for making a diagnosis for a patient. And, and they were early days, this is sort of 20 years ago, where MRI was, you know, compared to what it is now, uh, not as accurate or as fast or as precise, but uh, it's come in leaps and bounds since that time. So for me, the marriage of medicine, anatomy, pathology, sports injuries, and then uh, marrying that with this high-level technology, which uh, is now, you know, at our fingertips, is fantastic. It's very exciting. And, uh, Hal, you mentioned New York. You did spend some time in New York City, I believe, at quite a prestigious uh, training hospital. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I I did my uh, fellowship training after I trained as a specialist in Australia. I went over to New York 2001, 2002 at the Mount Sinai Medical Centre, which... uh, fantastic hospital, rich history and um, you know, learnt a lot of things there, you know, made a lot of lifelong friends and colleagues and uh, it's almost like a finishing school for, for your training and came back with some new skills which really weren't available in Australia so it's it's stood me in good standing you know, it's, it's a it's a hard commitment to make to, to move over to New York and to, uh, to live there uh, for a year or so but uh, you have a great time, it's a great city and um, you know, whereas other people are just starting their careers and not, not making that commitment to travel for a year and and do this work uh, I think it, it catches up it's good how uh, before we throw in some specifics to help listeners navigate potentially sports injuries and where imaging fits into their journeys um, your background in sports yourself uh, I didn't know until actually when we released the you can run pain free uh, book and uh, you popped a little testimonial in the front which is uh, was very kind of or kind of you and I was appreciative of that that you were a 239 might even be quicker marathoner right so yep, 239 yep, yep 239 uh, that was a Gold Coast marathon uh, a long time ago 1985 as an 18 year old uh, yeah, I've run three marathons, so I did 83, 84 and 85, those, those three years in a row and um, my goal was to break 240 always. Uh, the first marathon I did, uh, did 248, I just wanted to run four minute k's the whole way and I managed to do that. Yeah. Uh, and then the second marathon I had an injury and I did 247 and then the third one in 1985. Uh, did uh, the sub 240, so 239, 38 at yeah. Gold Coast here. So fantastic. Um, yeah, I was really happy with that. And uh, you know, that's 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 the uh, that's the you know the apprenticeship you got to you got to pay in a in a marathon, isn't it? You, you got to you got to figure out this thing and then, then try and improve it. But uh, and you were quite competitive going through your school years too, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Loved uh, cricket and football and cross country uh, was a big thing, and you know, running steeplechase and 5,000 meters on track and. I was fortunate enough, my father did a sabbatical over in Florida, so the whole family went over, and um, I went to high school over there and, and raced on the local track scene in Florida, so that was fantastic. Had a lot of lot of fun there. So, so you've got quite yeah. strong US roots, uh, US yeah. connections, I should say. Yeah, yeah, very much so, and um, you know, learning to sort of communicate in miles versus kilometres was a big change <laughs> for any of us from Australia uh, going over there, which was uh, which was fun, yeah. And Hal, you came back to Australia after your time in New York, and uh, not long after, founded QScan uh, Radiology, which 
Uh, I've been in my space, physiotherapy on the Gold Coast for 12 years now, and it's been fantastic to see the success of QScan. It's just gone from strength to strength. Um, give listeners just a little bit of perspective on what QScan's up to and where you're going and you know what sort of key services you provide. Sure, yeah. Look, um, it's a locally owned company. We started it um, just over 10 years ago uh, in Brisbane, and now we've spread to Brisbane, Gold Coast, Redcliffe, uh, I've got over 400 staff, over over 20 practices, and uh, in recent times we've been looking to expand even further uh, around Australia. Uh, so opening some practices in the oncology world, uh, so looking at patients with cancer, uh, treatment centres, uh, and partnering with ICON, which are a, a huge um, uh, cancer oncology uh, clinical network based here in Australia and also internationally in Asia. So uh, we've partnered with ICON and, and ROC, which is a big radiation oncology group, uh, to, to expand around Australia. So recently opened practice in Hobart mm-hmm. and we've got other plans all around Australia and ultimately in Asia. So it's very exciting for a locally owned company that we started to, to have it grow so rapidly in a short period of time. Uh, has been you know, a lot of work and, and it's been much like a marathon really you just need to uh, put one foot in front of the other and keep pushing on and, and, and really believing in what you're doing and seeing it through to the finish line and uh, how what is it you love about you know the, the practice work you've got your hospital work the interventional radiology diagnostic radiology with stroke patients etc which is in a different sector altogether and then you run and do your private practice work what do you love about that obviously is it that marriage of sports anatomy Absolutely, and at a QScan we've invested heavily in you know, the best technology, be that in ultrasound or in DEXA machines or CT scanners or, or MRIs I've been talking about before, and, and, and that really um, yeah, gives benefit to the patients. You get these fantastic images to make the diagnosis, and I guess you know with a sporting background you're very sympathetic to patients who present with an injury, and um, there may be you know it may be fairly obvious what the injury is, and you know the physios worked it out um, you know on clinical grounds, but sometimes there's a clinical dilemma and that's where the MRI really comes into its own that you're able to then isolate where the actual uh, cause of the pain is and what the injury is which can then modify the treatment that's being planned for the patient so look that's fantastic and and then also you know as the patient recovers doing repeat repeat and progress MRI you can then see you know how how the injury is healing and um, particularly with elite athletes where they're really time precious you know they have a, a big competition or event coming up in one month or two weeks and they, they have a niggle in, uh, you know, with training, it's very valuable information on the MRI that you can get to sort of uh, grade the injury and, and give them an idea of what's needed to rehabilitate rapidly to then uh, make it to their competition deadline. Yeah. Um, how? Let's do some specifics in terms of putting listeners through some of the common injuries and where radiology fits in with this. Uh, as a physiotherapist, I, patients often walk in with the expectation that, that there'll be imaging, and I think that's a healthy expectation because in their mind, I think that they equate that with the practitioner, be it a physiotherapist or some other allied health or primary caregiver, is being thorough if they've performed, Im- performed imaging. And I often in my world will work with the patient's expectations around imaging in the sense that I know that they won't think I'm being a thorough clinician unless, particularly for chronic problems, there's some degree of imaging. Uh, and in the medicine, in the physio world, there's often this, you know, back pain's a classic example, you know, imaging for back pain, you know, uh, stay, you know, we don't need to image to help patient gets, get better with their back pain, but I've always pushed back on that and said if a patient walks in with an expectation that the back's gonna be looked at, then who are you as a practitioner to not meet that expectation and be thorough and get them on board that everything's been checked and off you go and you put the intervention in place with more success. Mm. But um, how the thing I often say is imaging for me, you haven't been in the game a little while, it helps with prognosis. It helps with quantification. So if, if, you, if listeners, you're, ex, you know, you're engaging with a more experienced practitioner, the diagnosis you'd expect to be hopefully fairly accurate sometimes there's other things that need to be ruled in ruled out mm. but the, the value for me i always find with athletes how and you said it you know they've often got a date in their diary that they're trying to get ready for is that ability to be really circumspect and accurate with a prognosis and with what you need to do interventionally to make sure that they can either get to that event or you know change plans so if we do a few would you agree with that that there's so much value in prognosis and quantification that you can't get without 
something being imaged. Absolutely, and it's funny, it, it, I cast my mind back in the 90s when I was a medical student and, and we were always taught that the, the patient's history and clinical examination made up 90-95% of the evaluation of the patient and imaging and all these other tests, you know, blood tests were, were literally 5%. And, and really the 90s weren't that long ago, but, but really that reflected the quality of the imaging back then. So we didn't have MRI, we didn't have CT, we had very basic ultrasound and, and pretty much just extra was was the main modality that was available, uh, whereas it's been flipped on its head, and, and we see this all the time in the emergency departments. There's time pressure to get patients in and out, uh, make a diagnosis. So these patients, uh, you know trying to get them sorted out within four hours seriously all patients in emergency so they're all having ct scans uh, and the same things with athletes you know i think having an, uh, an mri early on can make the diagnosis and, and give them a prognosis and you know with expert physio help and rehabilitation they're able to then target what the actual cause is and and, and get them on a proper treatment plan because we see it all the time patients who haven't been properly diagnosed initially yep. Yep. they've wasted a lot of money and more importantly wasted a lot of time and frustration over many months and yep. many years uh, with an incorrect diagnosis without the outcomes they want. Yep. So you get that right diagnosis, you get on the right pathway with the right team of people looking after you, it, it makes a big, big difference. You get there and I often say that that's the greatest gift we can give a first-time patient in the doors is an accurate diagnosis. Uh, in the absence of that, it doesn't matter what treatment we throw at someone and you know, potentially it's going to be misdirected, it's going to take them longer, they're going to get frustrated, they're going to spend more health dollars on it. Um, and it could have been averted if the diagnosis is accurate initially. Uh, Hal, in terms of, let's do a few specifics here. Bone health, uh, we've mm. previously shared an expert edition around Belinda Beck from Griffith University and the work she does looking at the effect of exercise on bone health. If we've got listeners listening in who uh, say in the running space, the sports space with bony stress injuries, what are the key radiology uh, services that can, you know, that help athletes navigate their bone health journey? Yeah, so athletes have a, a lot of you know stresses that they put depending on their sport, whether it's a gymnast with upper body, uh, upper limb stresses, or a long distance runner with hips and lower uh, lower limb uh, repetitive stress injuries, or particularly spine as well. And, and bone health is is very important. And we're understanding more about uh, bone densitometry and and the actual mineralisation of the bone and metabolism of calcium and vitamin D. And so one of the tests we can use is a DEXA scan, uh, which looks at uh, body composition um, so this, this is really common at the moment in, in the sort of health and wellness industry where uh, patients have a DEXA scan under the setting of weight loss so patients on a weight loss program you're able to work out on the DEXA scan which incidentally only takes a couple of minutes to do very low radiation dose uh, and then you're able to work out the proportion of visceral fat subcutaneous adipose tissue uh, lean muscle mass and, and more importantly uh, the, the, uh, the bone density so we might see people with repetitive stress injuries stress fractures we might find they have a bone mineral uh, density issue and uh, it's very useful to to do these tests from that perspective uh, and like i said the value add is that you also get the information about your lean muscle mass and adipose uh, uh, tissue. So we quite often do these in the footballers actually through the season every month they'll have a, uh, particularly the front rowers will have a DEXA scan. Uh, so these guys are big lads uh, and we want to look at their muscle mass and you can weigh them on the scales and um, you know you might be happy that their weight looks like it's stable but uh, there can be different proportion of muscle, lean muscle versus uh, adipose tissue and that can be quite important uh, particularly with their diet and uh, modifications during their training programs. And so, so it's a DEXA scan and and if, if people listening were interested in finding out accurately what their you know their lean muscle mass etc the adipose you know the fat percentages or mm. um, do they need a GP referral for that or could they walk straight into a radiology clinic yeah you can you can walk in. it's often good to have somebody managing you mm. so um, from a Medicare point of view um, it's not covered so it's it's one of the things you have to pay yourself Medicare won't do that so in theory you don't need a referral but um, we always believe it's it's good yeah. to have a physio or a, a GP sort of manage Managing your health and yeah. getting those results, discussing those results yeah. with you. Um, so, from that perspective, no, you don't need a referral. You can just initiate it yourself. Yeah. So, we see these things also in, in some of the gyms. They have some other, you know, different tests using sort of electrical impedance, yeah. measuring uh, you know fat percentage from the body. But um, this is a much more accurate it's test. More so. the gold standard. It's yeah. yeah.
You're listening to Dr. Hal Rice share about all things sports injuries and medical imaging. Support for today's show comes from the Gold Coast Marathon. The Gold Coast Marathon encourages runners of all ages and abilities to push their boundaries and strive to complete a personal challenge. The Gold Coast Marathon is held annually on the first weekend in July and it's a must-do event for any budding athlete, weekend warrior or a family looking for a challenge to complete together. Run for the good times at the Gold Coast Marathon. Visit goldcoastmarathon.com.au. Support for today's episode also is brought to you by Pogo Physio. We exist to help you get back to your physical best following injury. We want everyone who walks through our doors of Pogo Physio to cross their physio finish line. That's where we high five you and tell you that you've finished rehabilitation and celebrate the fact that you're back to your physical best. In addition to traditional session to session appointments, we offer some industry first models of care, including our unique two, six, and 12 week fixed fee unlimited access finish line programs. These programs include unlimited hands-on therapies and exercise rehabilitation, including clinical Pilates and use of -of state-of-the-art equipment such as the Alter-G anti-gravity treadmill. In addition, our monthly fixed-fee wellness booster packages will help you save money and recover faster. Wellness boosters include remedial massage, physiotherapy, clinical Pilates, and more, starting at a low $195 per month. To find out more, about Pogo Physio and its services, jump over to pogophysio.com.au. Now let's jump back to Dr. Hal Rice on all things sports injuries and imaging. Hal, uh, bone health is something that certainly, uh, you know, if I see someone that's having experience in regular bone stress injuries and, you know, it's something that I now like to clinically get piece around is you know even for younger athletes we can't make it you know assume that they wouldn't necessarily have poor bone health um i'm finding you know bone mineral density tests are really important in terms of managing athletes that have a history of unusual bony stress Mm. injuries i'm talking stress reactions in the shin or the fibula or even or you know the, the femurs um, and so certainly listeners if you are experiencing regular bone stress injuries speak to your health practitioner about potentially getting your bone health checked using imaging and then diagnostically how uh, with lower limb stress injuries classically your shin your tibia sometimes your fibula often the femur as well the thigh bone listeners uh, I'll use a test like the single leg hop test quite often because it's very easy to do and if there's pain there and it's high level pain I'm often sort of you know thinking that there could be a bit more going on than just a stress response of the bone it could actually be a you know a stress fracture and I find how that the patient the, the athlete the client will hear that but quite often they need to see it <laughs> and so that's and also prognostically to quantify so that's where I'll refer off for a, a you know an MRI to check has there been a breach on the bone as a radiologist what do you see when you you know we send someone in with shin pain that you know what do you see if you look for a stress reaction versus stress fracture what do you actually see as the reporting radiologist yeah look it's really common brad so um, the key things we look for are what we call edema which is increased fluid so when a tissue be it a muscle or um, you know another part of your body is is contused or, or injured we see increased amounts of fluid so within the bone uh, the bone's got different compartments it has cortex which is the outer you know strong part of the bone and it's got bone marrow in the middle and what we tend to see and there's a whole spectrum of changes with stress responses you see some increased fluid swelling edema uh, within the bone marrow often initially uh, and then uh, later down the track if the injury is getting more severe we can actually see micro what we call microtrabecular fractures so these fractures if you did an x-ray it'd be very frustrating as a patient because you do the x-ray and it'd be called normal Uh, you wouldn't see any uh, abnormality on the x-ray but on the MRI we're able to see these very very subtle microtrabecular fractures which are then going through the cortex uh, and then you see uh, reactions uh, based uh, around that uh, particular injury so look MRI is really the gold standard for picking up stress response and and, um, if stress response or added stress is continued in that setting and not not well managed then we see stress fractures uh, which you can only pick up on MRI and then, then you can get 
leap fractures and, and they're the ones you'd see on a plane film yep. plane x-ray but uh, in that point in time you know the patient's severely disabled and we've missed the boat yeah. so really picking them up early and modifying their particular training or exercise regime is really important and uh, I find you know MRI is so powerful for then you know people have had a long history or they're a bit anxious about getting back and a little bit of timeline that's pressing that okay let's do a repeat study check to see everything's ready to go and that gives the patient as well it's not trial and error that it's a bit more set in stone okay we're ready here we can start to load up obviously you've got to do that wisely i often say hell imagine a medicine world in my world physiotherapy where everyone walked in with an mri <laughs> um, i know it's utopian but uh you know um people don't pay us to try and figure out what's wrong they expect for us to be able to know and guide them so i think uh, such power in mri so uh that's bone stuff tendon stuff Hal um, it's a massive world it's something I see regularly um, Achilles tendons patella tendons and jumping athletes hamstring tendons proximal hamstring tendons uh, plantar fascia stuff probably comes in there as well uh, put listeners in perspective with, with the best imaging that's available to help them do their journey of tendon rehabilitation Mm. Look, it's a really common injury and it's really frustrating and it takes a long, long time to heal. Uh, so we see patients who are being imaged with a suspected tendon injury and they've often suffered for many, many months and, and, and years and uh, really frustrating. Tendon injuries, again, MRI is fantastic at, at evaluating it, but ultrasound is also very good. So most of the tendons you're talking about, so the Achilles tendon or the patella tendon just below your kneecap there or your hamstring tendon, we can also see them very, very well with the ultrasound. Mm. And ultrasound has that added advantage of you know being able to see in real time where the patient's maximally tender. And so when we're doing the ultrasound, we're able to press gently with the ultrasound probe, which is providing the imaging information, and find out where that tenderness is. And then the other thing we can put on with the ultrasound now is some Doppler. And what the Doppler does is it tells us if there's blood flow, and we can see abnormal blood vessels. So often when you get a tendinopathy or a chronic tendon injury, you get these increased blood vessels trying to grow in and, and heal the area of inflammation and of course tendons don't normally have much of a blood supply so once you get those blood vessels there you get this perpetuation of uh, ongoing inflammation uh, and how um, in terms of the, the tendon itself I mean we know that you can have a tendon that's asymptomatic but will show signs on imaging so I think listeners it's important to always be led by a health professional in terms of where the marriage exists from what would be reported on, a, on an image and what your symptoms are. But certainly uh, the Dopplers, uh, how long has the Doppler been around for? Is it? Well, it's been around a long time, but it's just been refined, you know, in the last sort of 10, 15 years in ultrasound where it's, it's now of such good quality that we're able to sort of grade tendon injuries based on the, the amount of neovascularization or new blood supply that's uh, developed within the tendon or in the parotenon around the outside of the tendon itself and look, these are really tender painful injuries and um, yeah you're right you know if we do an MRI on an athlete uh, we'll very often see um, areas of inflammation around tendons where the tendons are joining into bone and that's really just a normal response to high level training and repetitive loading uh, and, and you really do need to marry the you know, imaging findings with the clinical presentation so where the patient's sore where they're symptomatic and gives it a lot more value yeah absolutely how uh, acute sporting injuries uh you'd see them across the many q scan sites walking in and out of the door all day every day uh you know acute knees football field injuries netball injuries whatever they may be acute muscle tears contusions runners calf tears psoriasis tears etc etc um imaging in that space how so say there's someone listening in they've been running on the weekend experienced a, a calf strain or suspected tear what would you suggest uh in terms of engaging their health professional obviously as a first contact imaging in that space you know? Yeah, look, again, if you, you know, make sure you have a good physio or GP or specialist looking after you. But, but again, you know, depending on the severity of the injury, we might find you know, some trivial injuries just settle down of their own accord. But injuries which to you feel more serious, more painful, more disabling, uh, I think MRI, again, is, is really useful. Um, it, it can isolate where that swelling is. It can isolate where the muscle tear is. We're able to accurately grade it if it's a partial thickness tear, full thickness tear, or just a strain injury. Again, 
that's very useful in um, getting an idea of you know what your prognosis is. Are you going to be out of action for one week, or is it going to be four to six weeks? And and that's a big difference. And you know, if you're out of action for four to six weeks, but you attempt to come back and start training again after two or three weeks, that's where these injuries don't heal. So uh, I think the MRI is really really important in that setting. Of course, the MRI is also useful if you have intra-articular injuries, so tears of your cruciate ligaments in your knee or meniscus, uh, all those really serious injuries, and, and that can help strata whether the patient needs to have a surgical intervention to, to repair that knee or if it can be managed conservatively without surgery. So we're finding that now a lot with a lot of the knee surgeons. You know, patients are, are being triaged with MRI, so the MRI is really sorting out which patients need to have surgery and uh, which patients can then be managed with physiotherapy or, or just uh, routine rehabilitation. Yeah, and I think certainly listeners, if you are, you know, on the joint stuff, if you're experiencing a whole lot of swelling following acute acute injury, then uh, you know, con- connect as quickly as you can with your health professional. And uh, in terms of imaging, don't hold back, make the mistake of holding back, thinking things will just get better. I've had cases of people with multiple fractures in foot and ankles, feet and ankles, uh, from trauma that um you know, have never been imaged uh, or imaged correctly. And so uh, it's super important to get an accurate diagnosis, particularly with the knees, things like ACL injuries um, and ligament, you know, disruption, which uh, often without a proper image would just go undetected and decades later manifest. So how, um, in terms of uh, some things, just basic things like back pain, neck pain, uh, you work a lot in those spaces as well. So, you know, the umbrella term, the, the common term being sciatica. Uh, what, you know, what things would you typically do in a work day to help people with you know, persistent sciatic pain? Yeah, look, so a patient who presents with sciatic pain and, and that name's derived from irritation of the sciatic nerve, which in essence sort of runs down the back of the leg. So these patients present with this pain often in their back, but then pain radiating down uh, one or both of their legs, uh, usually down the back of the leg. Uh, and it may go to below the knee into their foot or toes. Uh, that in, is generally a sign that one of the nerves in the lumbar spine or the lower back uh, is being irritated or, or compressed. And in most scenarios, if it's happened acutely, it m- would be due to a disc herniation. And we've all heard about disc prolapses or disc herniations pressing uh, on a nerve. The good news is the vast majority of those will settle down just with conservative management and you know strengthening your core and rehabilitation but there's no really way in the acute setting to separate who needs rehabilitation or who needs surgery Uh, and again you know we come back to MRI MRI wins out on this one as well because it it gives us valuable information about the health of the discs in the lumbar spine or the cervical spine up in the neck Uh, we can able to see the nerves the spinal cord we're able to see if any of those nerves are being compromised or compressed uh, either by some uh, chronic bony spurring or, or due to an acute disc which has uh, prolapsed recently and is pressing on that nerve. So some of the things I do to manage these patients, like I said, the vast majority of patients will actually get better of their own accord, is, is to try and manage the symptoms. So we use imaging guidance to do some injections around those areas where the disc prolapse is pressing on the nerve. So we're able to put some very strong cortisone and uh, anaesthetic around those nerves and uh, reduce the swelling in the inflammation in those nerves to alleviate the patient's symptoms and uh, allow them to you know, undertake their rehabilitation uh, much more comfortably. And so there'll be some patients who do that just once and, and that's all they need. There'll be other patients who they need it two or three times over a period of six months. Uh, and then there'll be the other category of patients, like I mentioned before, where there's, there's a very large disc prolapse and, and the only option is is you know, surgical microsurgery to, to remove that disc. Yeah, and certainly something that uh, in my practice, I'm, you know, uh, is something that we engage regularly to help, as you say, help patients navigate their symptoms uh, as they do their rehabilitation journey conservatively or in cases sometimes up to the point of surgery being the only option. How uh, cortisone, you mentioned the word cortisone. Uh, I find day to day there's still a negative uh, stigma often about cortisone with which is just uh, founded on people's uh, lack of comprehensive understanding as to its role in 
sports medicine and appropriateness at the right time. What would you say to listeners that, you know, uh, firstly, what is cortisone? And secondly, when's it appropriate and, and how is, should it be administ- ideally administered? Yeah, so cortisone is a very, very powerful drug. It comes in, in different forms. So it can be in tablet form. It can be intravenous uh, form, which we give to patients who are in intensive care in the hospitals. Or, or we can do local injections around nerves or into soft tissues. Um, yeah, it does, it does have a bad uh, reputation in some areas because, you know, if it's misused or mismanaged, it can cause uh, complications and, and problems worse than the initial problem. However, you know, in, in someone who knows what they're doing with cortisone, it can be very, very beneficial. So I think, um, you know, in modern practice, we have really accurate imaging with MRI, with CT, with ultrasound. We're able to now, when we do these injections with ultrasound or CT guidance, we're able to actually see where we're going with the needle and, and very gently inject the cortisone where it's needed, uh, rather than in previous years, it used to just be done blind. You just palpate or feel the patient's area of tenderness, stick a needle in and, and do the injection. So that's where pe- patients were having problems and and then obviously if you're still getting ongoing pain and it's not settling with cortisone uh, we do repeat the injections from time to time but uh, the the problems are if over you know many repeat injections it can weaken muscles weaken tendons so again that's something those of us who are very familiar with the use and the safe use of cortisone are aware of and we avoid those scenarios so look to answer your question it's a very powerful drug but it's got a very significant and important role in managing pain and settling down uh, acute and chronic injuries if it's managed properly and appropriately yeah absolutely i think they're the key key terms appropriately and uh and you know at the right time how uh Trends. What's got you excited in the world of radiology? Oh, look, every couple of years there's, there's um, some new developments and, you know, in the background the, the biggest developments are increased speed in computing. So what happens when we make these images on CT or MRI or ultrasound, what we're really relying on is, is uh, computer technology to, to make the images. So people and your listeners will remember some of them have had an MRI and it might have taken 45 minutes to do the MRI, whereas now the thing that excites me is we're now able to narrow down MRI times to 10-15 minutes in the vast majority of cases you know obviously there's some scenarios where we need to do uh, many more sequences and images but you know the exciting thing is we're getting higher speed not losing quality in fact getting better quality images for patients so it's becoming much more comfortable um, and and more precise so look I think that's the most exciting thing for me And, and then I guess that that linkage uh, to the, the digital world where patients are able to have this uh, imaging file of their ultrasounds or CTs or DEXA scans you know, online uh, and within an app on their, on their smart device, their iPad or their iPhone uh, and able to take that with them wherever they go in the world and, uh, and have those images. So I think that's um, very exciting because like we keep saying throughout this um, broadcast that you know, imaging is really the mainstay of, of, of current um, medicine Medical management. So whether it's a patient with a with a very slow growing tumour, we use imaging to, to monitor that tumour and the response to chemotherapy and the same things with a, an athlete with, with an injury, a chronic repetitive injury, we use imaging to number one make the diagnosis and number two restage the uh, injury on how it's recovering and how it's healing. And then further down the track, uh, you know, a year or two later the patient gets symptoms in that same leg or that same region, we're able to then do imaging and find that look it's not that same injury that's flared up it's actually a new injury so again very rapidly and non-invasively we're able to uh, evaluate patients and I think that's the exciting thing I think you know for all of us you know we're we're health practitioners but from time to time we're also patients ourselves and uh, particularly as we get older that's the sort of thing that you know we're all going to find big benefit in the community. Absolutely, and I've certainly uh, been through uh, multiple uh, Q-scan MRIs and uh, I think it's a fascinating uh, progression one you'd expect but the you know the comforts increasing, the accessibility is you know becoming more accessible, and you know costs of service. Uh, these aren't you know cheap machines. The cost of service over the years is uh, certainly in my time of practice has come right down. Uh, to put listeners in perspective, uh, I mean the cost of a current MRI machine in real terms. Yeah, look, if you're buying the state of the art, the best equipment, uh, you're looking at sort of three million dollars uh, for the best best machine, um, and we've we got them all over the place. So. You know, many, many machines. When we build a practice with uh, CT, X-ray, MRI um, and other things, we're, we're looking at 
investment of six million dollars um, just on equipment, you know, and that's not to uh, forget that we've got very expensive staff, uh, radiographers, our sonographers, our nursing, nursing staff. If you want the best people working these machines and in the practices providing really high level of care, which is what we aspire to in our particular group, um, that, that also costs money as well. So um, some of your listeners will, you know, realise there's gaps with Medicare and that's unfortunate. Medicare really hasn't kept up pace with this uh, increasing costs of technology and in fact over 15 years there's been no increase in, in rebate uh, amounts so your patients will notice that they, they will often have to pay a gap and um, that's unfortunate but you know they're paying for quality and um, you know there's some practices where you won't be paying any gap and unfortunately that's because it's become commoditized you know you, you just they're just trying to get through and make ends meet by speed and cutting corners and you know if you really want the best quality do your homework, uh, look for practices which care about quality. Unfortunately, there, there may be costs involved and, and that's the downside. And, you know, that can even be uh, inferior technologies and then obviously this team radiology reporting on that. And certainly I think health consumers that are savvy that, you know, want, want to get something done, they realise you do really get what you pay for and it's no different to physiotherapy. I mean, we, yeah, we've changed things we do in our initial now for the very reason of getting accurate, you know, original, uh, initially with, with diagnosis. You're listening to Dr. Hal Rice share around all things sports injuries and imaging. If you missed last week's episode featuring 2016 Olympic triathlon champion Gwen Jorgensen, then be sure to jump over and tune into episode 105. In this episode, Gwen shared around her quest for Olympic gold in the marathon in Tokyo 2020. Gwen shared about the highs, the lows, and the learnings of her incredible career to date. Two world titles, an Olympic gold, and now the pursuit of an Olympic gold in another sport altogether. If you missed it, here's a little snippet from Gwen Jorgensen, US Olympic triathlon champion. There's a big misconception that if you're really athletic or if you run a lot of miles or if, you know whatever if you if you do a lot in sport that it's okay to not get your period and to not have your menstrual cycle and i think that's totally incorrect i think you can be at the top of your game you can be putting in a lot of miles running or you can be you know a world class triathlete or whatever your sport is and that doesn't have to mean that your menstrual cycle is um, is affected and for me, I really think once your body, when your body loses that menstrual cycle, I think it's warning you, hey, I'm not getting enough nutrients here and I'm not able to you know, stay on my cycle like I should be. And I think that's the first warning sign for athletes. And it's a red flag saying, uh-oh, you know, what's going to be next? Maybe a stress fracture or something else because you're not getting those nutrients. So I think it is a really important topic and something that not all females are aware of. To tune into the full episode and explore the archives of the show, be sure to jump over to pogophysio.com.au or simply, pursue, or simply peruse the archives right from your favourite podcast player. Now, let's jump back to Dr. Hal Rice on sports injuries and imaging. Hal, um, you mentioned bone, muscle fibre MRI. Uh, is something that uh, is really, you know, with your sporting roots and also your radiology expertise has got you excited. Uh, can you put listeners a little bit into that world? You're doing some research with this at the moment. I believe yeah, look, um, and we keep talking about MRI, and I think it's probably the, one of the most exciting things in, in medicine over the last 15, 20 years, and, and it, it keeps getting better year after year, new technology and uh, new ways to assess anatomy and injuries, tendons, muscles, but we're able to also and we've been doing this for many years looking at brain tumors and and able to work out what chemicals are within those brain tumors and it's called spectroscopy and so you know without actually having to take a sample of that brain tumor out of a patient you're able to analyze it uh, on MRI and use MR spectroscopy to evaluate what chemicals were within that brain tumor to work out what type of tumor it is what grade how severe it is and in recent times we were able to now look at muscle type so we're able to look at metabolites within muscle 
and as many of your listeners will know there's there's often two types of muscle uh, with the fast twitch and slow twitch fibers so some people genetically are, are born with a high proportion of uh, fast twitch fibers and those people are, are usually good at sprinters and, and power sports uh, whereas some people uh, genetically have a higher proportion of slow twitch fibers the red fibers and those people are more endurance athletes so what we're able to do is uh, look at these muscles uh, in the MRI scanner and, and work out if this person is a slow twitch athlete or a fast twitch athlete now that may not mean much if you're a 30 or 40 year old uh, athlete you know you've you've done your dash the exciting thing is we're able to now look at young athletes so 13 14 year old athletes who may be in little athletics and and think they're a sprinter and have been doing really well in in the power or the the sprinting uh, events but then we put them in the scanner and we find shock horror that they they actually have fairly low proportions of uh, fast twitch fibers and they've got a high proportion of slow twitch fibers what we're able to do there is then counsel that athlete that junior athlete that perhaps they should start looking at the longer endurance sports even though they're a really good sprinter as a 12 year old or 13 year old uh, inevitably what will happen is you know as they go through their teenage years they'll they'll become more and more frustrated as uh, the other kids with the slow the fast twitch fibers start outrunning them in the sprint distances and um, you know the sad thing is these athletes often then give up frustrated that uh, this 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 uh, great sprinting career that they had and they thought they were going to be going to the Olympics um, never never came to be but if we're able to tell them well hang on you, you're actually got really high proportion of slow twitch fibers you're going to be a, an endurance uh, or longer athlete so I think that's exciting mm-hmm. um, you know previously this had to be done by muscle biopsy which is a painful uh, thing so you can imagine you know, it's not all that palatable as a 14 year old uh, having a muscle biopsy out of your calf uh, muscle, so we're able to do that now, just non-invasively with MRI. So, and is that widespread available? Or this is a fairly niche technology. That very, you know, very niche. It's one of the research projects we're working on locally, and um, there's a lot of international expertise that we've linked in with uh, recently as well. So, uh, there's a few projects going on at the moment, uh, looking at young female athletes to evaluate, you know, their, their proportion of fast and slow twitch fibers. Yeah. Wow. So uh, this, that has the potential to change the game of, uh, you know, of, of sports and sports endeavours, you know, if that was more widespread, right? Well, I think so. And look, you know, I think sport, people do sport for a number of reasons, don't we? And, you know, it's enjoyment, satisfaction. Uh, but then there's a subgroup of people who have higher expectations and, and really want to dedicate their life for uh, their, their younger years, you know, to become really committed and, and have goals, be it Commonwealth Games or Olympic Games or just to be the best athlete they can. And um, I, I guess, you know, kids often fall into sports by default, you know, either mm. parents or siblings or friends and, you know, they, they may not actually be suited to that sport. Yeah. And so if we're able to find that, you know, their muscle type is much better suited to, a, you know, a similar sport to which they've fallen in love with, but we can tell them that, hey, you know, you're going you're gonna to get a much better athletic career and result yeah. if you, you modify that, you know, and go to being a middle distance runner rather than a sprinter or a 3,000 metre runner on track rather than than a 100 metre runner, um, that, that may give some uh, potential useful information to the patient, the, 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 the young athlete, and um, you know, take away some of that frustration which inevitably comes down the track. And also change potentially activity patterns throughout the lifespan, you know, through more engagement and uh, not that sort of uh, dismissing, well, I'm not cut out for that sport, you know, I'm just not meant to run. Or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like you see that all the time, don't you, where these young athletes suddenly become very, you know, they were lots of hope, lots of promise, lots of commitment and, and then they very, very rapidly uh, became disinterested when they became 15 or 16 because uh, they weren't really matched to the sport and it, it wasn't a great uh, match. Hal, uh, final few questions here. QScans uh, works as the uh, radiology cho- uh, group of choice for Gold Coast Titans, uh, Brisbane Broncos in the NRL and the Gold Coast Suns. And so uh, you would have the players playing group regularly in and out of the doors. Uh, what's the thing you enjoy about working with the professional sporting teams? We've spoken a lot about individuals, but if we sort of contextualise to teams, what is it about the teams side that you enjoy? Oh, look, look, we really enjoy it because you're dealing with athletes at the highest level and we look after Triathlon Australia 
Australia, Swimming Australia, uh, Cricket Australia, uh, most of the major sporting teams in South East Queensland uh, will come to us uh, by choice because of the expertise in our group, both by the doctors and then the, the level of uh, imaging equipment that we have. Uh, what we like about it is, you know, dealing with these athletes, they're, they're highly motivated to get better, to have an accurate diagnosis made quickly. Uh, they've got a game next weekend that they want to run on the paddock and, and play and, um, you know, they're anxious about getting that, that diagnosis made quickly and uh, then get into their rehabilitation. So we really enjoy that and uh, working working with these athletes, it's fantastic. But, you know, that really then flows on to, the, you know, the weekend warriors who are really important as well. You know, they've got as much passion for sport as, as the professional athletes. So you really need to embrace those people. So I think, you know, if we can get things right for the elite athletes, then what it means is there's a flow and effect to the to the uh, the amateur athlete who's doing their best, uh, you know, whilst holding down a full time job or managing a family at home. They're equally as important, but uh, it means then we have the facilities which then give them that same level of uh, care and um, treatment. State of the art access. How, uh, if you could boil everything you've learned across your significant career to date down to one piece of advice to help listeners perform at their physical best. What would Hal Rice's one piece of advice be to listeners? Oh, that's that's an unfair question, Brad. Like uh, one piece of advice, I, I could give you many, but I don't know. I think um, I think mental attitude. If I if I if I could give you know, and you're making me come up with one thing, I'm putting you under pressure. Huh? Mental attitude is is probably the best thing. Okay, you've got to enjoy what you do, so it's mental attitude. You've got to be passionate about it and follow through. And I think if if your mental attitude's good, and you see that with elite athletes, that's often the difference between and you know gifted athletes who have all the physical attributes you know between athlete a and athlete b but the athlete has got the mental strength uh, and th- that that puts them at a much higher level uh to to the athlete which doesn't so so again that flows through so again hard question but you know i think mental attitude's fantastic and you know enjoy life and um embrace what you have and uh and really use the resources that you have out there in the community both in health services diagnosis treatment uh to then pursue your dreams and and ultimately have that that uh yeah mental self-satisfaction and self-reward uh, and I think that would be the number one thing. It's brilliant. Hal, uh, last question to get an idea behind the personality, behind the professional. Three people at a dinner table, living or past, who'd be at your dinner table, mate? Oh, look, um, again, a tough question. You know, how do you limit it to three? I'd have to have you there, Brad. Uh, so. <laughs> no, look, um, you know, you go through, you know, some amazing people uh, around the world who have been inspirational. And uh, you look at Nelson Mandela would be uh, one person. Um, you look at Muhammad Ali. You know, I'm talking about people who've passed away, so I, I guess that's being greedy, isn't it? But um, if you could get those two around the table, that would be fantastic. Um, you can pick a third. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll see it as a fourth. A, as a guy who loved America, loves New York, you know, uh, John F. Kennedy, you know, uh, died very young, unfortunately. Uh, it'd be fantastic. But then, look, there's a, there's a litany of uh, sports people out there, you know, that I'd love to have, musicians, people in the arts, politicians, but, yeah. you know, they're, they're the three I've picked uh, off the top of my head. They're, they're, <laughs> She's they're, like, they're, to make that company. They're, they're, they're three of, uh, they're three of uh, 3,000, so, yeah. Uh, Hal, finally, physical challenge to listeners for the week. Every guest, be that an expert uh, or, you know, one of the uh, athletes we profile, issues listeners with a physical challenge for the week. What's Hal, Dr. Hal Rice's physical challenge for the week? Be. Oh, look, I think physical challenge for the week, just try and do uh, whatever you do in your sport or your training, uh, and, and I'm the same, you wake up in the morning and you just don't feel like doing it that particular day, I reckon make that your challenge, the morning that you wake up and you don't feel like doing what you normally do, whether it's a walk, a run, a swim, a paddle on a ski, uh, you know, reverse that negativity, take it on, make that a challenge just for that day, just for that hour and overcome that and I think that'll give you a lot of self-satisfaction and happiness. Dr. Hal Rice, thank you for your time. I know it's precious and uh, I really appreciate it. I know listeners will have taken some uh, valuable information from sharing today. So uh, all the best for the rest of the year and listeners, jump over to the show notes. You'll find all the links to QScan Radiology Groups and some of the things we've featured today. So thanks very much. Thanks, Brad.
So there you have it. Another episode of the Physical Performance Show. I trust you enjoyed today's episode featuring Dr. Hal Rice. If you did, please let myself and Hal know. You'll find our social media handles over at pogophysio.com.au along with a copy of the show notes. If today was your first time tuning into the Physical Performance Show, then a mighty welcome. If it was your 106th time, then thank you for your ongoing support. If you've enjoyed today's episode and you know someone that would benefit or enjoy it, then please share the episode with them. Sharing means the world to myself, and it also helps the show get into the earbuds of more people who, just like you, are looking to pursue and perform at their physical best. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you'd like to get the episode auto-updated each and every week to your favorite podcast player. If you've been enjoying the show, then please consider leaving a rating and review on iTunes. It's very simple. Jump over to iTunes. You can now do it from your smartphone and click away. Five stars if you've been enjoying the program, one star if you think there's some work to do. I personally enjoy reading the reviews. I read them all. In particular, this week, I want to give a shout out to regular show listener, Wayne Stiles. Wayne rated the show five stars and commented, these podcasts are awesome. It feels like you're listening to Brad talk around the dinner table or at your local cafe. The people on the show really open up to the casual, knowledgeable and sincere approach. They all give you a great insight into their sporting and or clinical achievements. You get to learn how each guest got to their high level of excellence, their highlights, struggles, and what they have planned for the future. Most people will know these names from their achievements they have read and seen in the media. The Physical Performance Show, however, adds another dimension. You get their backstories, their advice, their philosophies, and a feel for the personalities of each speaker. Keep them coming. Wayne, thank you very much for your support ongoing of the show and also for taking the time to leave a review. A big thanks as always to the team who make the Physical Performance Show possible. That's Susan Wilkin on all things show administration, Matthew Olding on all things graphic design, and of course, Daryl Misson, our amazing audio engineer for putting the show together each and every week. A big thank you to the show sponsor today, Gold Coast Marathon. If you are yet to run the Gold Coast Marathon, I have run it numerous times and it rates as one of my favorite events of any kind. The weekend, there's something about this is special. It really is about the good times. It's on a beautiful course and the atmosphere is simply amazing. Don't miss the Gold Coast Marathon. Jump over to goldcoastmarathon.com.au. We'd really like to hear from you around what we can do better with the Physical Performance Show. So we've created a quiz and it can be found over at pogophysio.com.au forward slash podcast. There you can answer some short and simple questions and provide your feedback on how we can make the show better. To say thank you, we're running a competition between now and episode 115 where you can go into the draw to win a $100 voucher to cinemas of your choice in your local area. Simply fill it in, leave your name and email address and your comments around what we can do better, what you like, what you don't like about the show, and that will help us continue to improve. Of course, you're welcome to email me b.beer at pogophysio.com.au with suggestions for show improvements, feedback, or any guests that you'd like to hear featured here on the Physical Performance Show. Podsy of the week goes to Eli MCC, and Eli was recently enjoying a run in the evening, eight five hundred hill reps, three hundred and forty meters of elevation, listening to lessons learnt through the sharings of Phil Liggett. And Eli commented, "A very lazy day today, so lazy I didn't do a long run this morning. So I made myself do hill repeats after dark, eight by five hundred meter hill repeats, three hundred and forty meters of elevation." lesson learnt. Get out of bed and do your long run. So much easier than the dreaded hill repeats. Though listening to the physical performance show, Phil Liggett made it much more enjoyable. I'll remember his advice, believe in yourself and be prepared to suffer like hell. I'll remember that during my next ultra trail run. Thanks Pogo Physio and Phil Liggett for the inspiration. Thanks Eli for 
putting up a Podsy of the Week. And it's real simple. If you'd like to be the Podsy of the Week and receive a signed copy of my Amazon Running and Jogging bestseller, you can run pain-free. Then simply take a screenshot of the episode that you're listening to and enjoying on your device and tag us in on social media at Pogo Physio or at Brad underscore beer. And you can go into the draw to be the Podsy winner of the week. Finally, if you're into running, you can now pick up your copy of my running and jogging bestseller. You can run pain-free with a 50% discount off the recommended retail price of $24.95. It's a simp. It's simple. Head over to pogophysio.com.au and there you can enter a promo code, one word, POD2018, lowercase, to receive 50% off the recommended retail price. You Can Run Pain-Free is 330 plus pages packed full of information that will help you do exactly what the cover says, enjoy injury-free running and faster running also. Coming up on next week's episode of the Physical Performance Show, episode 106, I caught up in person just off the back of the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games with four times Commonwealth Games Australian representative, 5,000 and 10,000 metres at the 2018 Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast, Eloise Wellins. Eloise has been a guest of the Physical Performance Show way back on episode 32. However, it wasn't just Eloise who popped into Pogo Physio straight off the back of the Commonwealth Games. Eloise was joined by Julius Akon. Julius himself is a dual Ugandan Olympian, having represented Uganda in the 96 and 2000 Olympic Games in the 800 and 1500 metres. And Julius and Eloise wanted to pop in and give us an update around. And Julius and Eloise wanted to pop in and talk through their individual stories and also their coming together story to form the Love Mercy Foundation. It's an incredible story of inspiration and of significance and how sport and running can transcend results and medals and achievements and really speak to solving some of the world's great challenges. So be ready to be inspired on next week's episode of the Physical Performance Show with Eloise Wellings and Julius Akon. Until then, keep pursuing your physical best performance. I'm Brad Beer and this has been the Physical Performance Show.